What's up guys and welcome to today's video. Um, I thank you for joining us again. Don't forget all, to do all the good stuff, the likes, the comments, the subscriptions. <laughs> um, before we get into today's video, just a quick recap on the previous preview and prediction video. Um, the match between Manchester United and Chelsea in the English Premier League at Old Trafford. Result was fairly obvious. Um, I think we did already know that United would win by at least two goals. Um, all three players that I spoke about ended up scoring, which was fantastic. It was um, Casemiro, Rashford and Bruno Fernandes. Um, Casemiro, for me personally, was fantastic on the night. Um, he opened the scoring and then uh, he played a crucial pass in the build-up to, I think it was the second goal. So, um, yeah, well, well done to Manchester United. With that, United have wrapped up fourth spot in the Premier League, meaning that they now qualify for the UEFA Champions League for next season. That is such a crucial development for a club like Manchester United, a club where you want to be attracting the best players in the world um, to come and play for you and you want your players to be performing and to be competing at the highest level uh, possible. Um, I know there's a lot of talk about players like uh, Jude Bellingham, Harry Kane, Victor Osiman, Mason Mount, um, all possibly signing for United and them qualifying in the Champions League next season um, is, is simply just going to make it easier for them to sign these, these big name players who want to win trophies like the Premier League and then like the Champions League. Um, and a team like Manchester United has so much pedigree um, and, and such a fantastic history that uh, I, I think any player they sign, or, or there's very few players who they could sign who, who wouldn't be successful. Um, but without any further ado, let's, let's get into today's match. Um, today we will be looking at the clash between Borussia Dortmund and Mainz at the Signal Iduna Park. Now, this one is really important because I, I would call, call it a Bundesliga decider. Um, Dortmund have done a fantastic job of chasing down Bayern Munich this entire season. I think the gap between them was nine points and Dortmund managed to, to shave it off bit by bit. And eventually now they're leading uh, the Bundesliga by two points, which means if Dortmund win against Mainz, they will be crowned Bundesliga champions. Um, they've worked really hard for it this season. Um, and I, I think, you know, a team like Dortmund, um, they, they're really a team for the neutrals. Because Dortmund, despite having the stigma of being a selling club, um, I, I wouldn't call them that. I would call them a development club. Dortmund is the type of club that goes out, um, looks at players that aren't that well-known, and then creates superstars out of them. Um, so I think it'll be a curious one to watch. Very interesting match. Um, and, and let's get into it. Okay, we kick off our team analysis with the home side, Borussia Dortmund, who are currently leading the Bundesliga, as we said, by two points. Dortmund are on a run of four wins and a single draw in their last five matches. Their last match ended with a 3-0 victory over Augsburg. Um, there was an early red card in that match, so obviously that influenced um, the result. Um, but in the 58th minute, Sebastian Haller was able to capitalize on some very sloppy defending from Augsburg and he managed to convert it and score. Um, Dortmund had to work really hard for that. I mean, it, it came in the 58th minute. That's that's a long time. And I think at that point, Augsburg had already been playing for about 20 minutes with 10 men. Um, so it, it's nothing to shout home about. But in the 84th minute, Haller then got his brace. Um, somebody took a shot. The keeper saves it. And Haller just finds himself in the right place at the right time for an easy tap-in um, and he gets his brace. And then in the third minute of injury time, Julian Brandt makes it 3-0 for Dortmund after some fantastic pressure from Dortmund. Um, and this is something that I, I loved watching them do is they just, they know exactly how to put pressure on teams. But um, yeah, Brandt ends up with the ball and, and he slots it home and Dortmund go home as 3-0 uh, winners. Um, I think three players that I feel that we should definitely be watching at Dortmund. Number one, Jude Bellingham. Um, everybody's talking about Bellingham right now. Some big teams are looking to acquire his signature from Dortmund, but he seems solely focused on, on his time at Dortmund right now, even though it is probably going to be very short. Um, with 12 goals and 5 assists, I think his contribution to the team cannot be understated. 
especially when you consider that he's gotten those goals and assists from playing a kind of deeper midfield role as opposed to playing as a center forward or a winger um so his, his performances this season have been fantastic and it, it warrants all of these uh these discussions about a big money transfer perhaps to manchester united or man city real madrid even um but bellingham is definitely somebody that we need to be watching sebastian haller as well haller hasn't really hit the heights that you would have expected him to at dortmund this season but with nine goals and three assists it's it's decent all of those goals have come in the second half of the bundesliga um which just goes to show if he had perhaps started the bundesliga the way he's ending it you could possibly have seen Sebastian Haller get about 25 or maybe even 26 goals um, this season. But I think um, something he does very well is, is this pressuring. Um, and in a team like Dortmund, you need everybody to have a certain level of energy to, to be pressuring and to be um, just trying to make the opposition as uncomfortable as possible. And that's exactly what Haller does. And he does it very, very well. So I think he's the next player we need to watch. And then finally, Rafael Guerrero is the last player I think we should be watching at Dortmund because... Um, He's got 13 assists. He's leading the way for them in terms of the assists this season. Um, all the eyes are always on your goal scorers and your central players, but Guerrero brings something that Dortmund really need from out wide. Um, and he can play in multiple positions as well. I think his contribution as well, you, you really just cannot understate it. A lot of people, when they think Dortmund, the first thing they think of is Marco Rios. Um, but, th but these players, Bellingham, Haller and, and Guerrero, um, they've really stepped up because, I mean, Rios is... is pretty much constantly injured whenever Dortmund need him um, and, and these players have shown that that they can they can make something when they need to um, so I think I think Dortmund have a decent chance here of, of walking away as Bundesliga champions this season next we move on to Mainz now Mainz are in complete contrast to Dortmund. Their last five matches have ended with four losses and a single win. Now, what's weird is that win was a 3-1 win against Bayern Munich. How that happened, I have no idea. But it happened. Um, <laughs> in their last match, Mainz went down 4-1 at home against Stuttgart. In the 23rd minute, Ingvartsen opened the scoring for the hosts. Um... It was a corner and they sort of like just managed to force it in over the line. It was a decent goal. Um, in the 41st minute, Stuttgart managed to equalize courtesy of Endo, who took a decent out-of-the-box shot. It sort of loops over the keeper and into the net, so it's, it's a decent goal. In the 64th minute, Gurassi makes it 2-1 to Stuttgart from a corner. Um, and now it looks like mines have sort of been rattled and, and I don't think... I don't think they expected it, and when it happened, it sort of just opened the floodgates because in the 78th minute, Führich with a fantastic cutback and finish in the Mainz box. If you look at it, it's kind of like nobody's really putting pressure on him, but I think also the defender closest to the keeper is kind of blocking the keeper's view, and that's why it's so easy for Führich to sort of curl the ball around the defender and around the keeper and into the corner. And then finally, in the first minute of injury time, Koulibaly, a fantastic counter-attack from Stuttgart, uh, again, Mainz just didn't deal with it properly. I mean, you had two defenders challenging one player for the ball and they still couldn't get the ball away from him. Um, and he runs into the box uh, and Koulibaly just capitalizes on a loose ball because I think uh, initially it's a shot that, that gets deflected or gets saved. And Koulibaly also has a, a simple tap in into an empty net. And I think for Mainz, the important players to watch is definitely Ingvartsen. Um, 10 goals this season for him. I think that makes him... Mine's top goal scorer this season, um, and he's he's looking okay-ish. <laughs> if if a goal is going to come from Mines, it's definitely going to come from Ingvartsen. Um, or it's, it's very likely that it will. Somebody also that I think we need to be watching is Onisibu. So Onisibu is both on Mines' list of top goal scorers and top assists. It's, it's just two assists though, so it's not much. Um, but those nine goals are still crucial. I think those... Those assists kind of proves that Mainz are kind of this team that's not very confident right now. I mean, they, they are ninth in the Bundesliga, which is a lot. But still, I think, you know, it's not the kind of team, team where you expect to see like um, five goals or three goals or four goal wins. Um, it's a kind of team where when they lose, they lose pretty heavy. <laughs> and there have been quite a few losses lately. Um, but when they win, then they score quite a few. But those goals are fine and, and few between, so... 
yeah. <laughs> um, and then finally, I think somebody else watches Jae Sung Lee. Um, <sighs> Lee comes in with seven goals and three assists. He's also on both um, a list of, of goal scorers and assists. Um, and he also brings something different to this team. He's a very physical player. Um, he scored a very important goal, I think, for them against Dortmund um, from a corner, just showing how much power he's got. Um, and I think he will also be very crucial for Mainz going into this fixture. Okay, and now onto the bit that everybody's here for, um, the verdict. So, it's a weird fixture, um, because this isn't a fixture that Dortmund usually lose. Um, in the last five, I think they've won all five. Um, it's been some weird scorelines here. There's a 2-1, a 1-0. The last one between these two sides did end 2-1 to Dortmund. Um, Lee opened the scoring very early on in the second minute. Four mines um, from a corner, courtesy of a header. Um, it was a decent goal, but then like two minutes later, literally two minutes later, in the, in the fourth minute, um, Ryerson equalized for Dortmund. Um, a deflected shot, he takes it from out of the box and it just sort of gets somebody's leg and loops over the keeper into the back of the net. Um, and then finally, in the third minute of injury time, Reyna got a winner for Dortmund. Um, I think again it was a corner, uh, Haller heading the ball and, and it just ending up with Reyna or at Reyna's feet towards the end of the post, um, at the far post, and he just manages to put it past the keeper. So, again, I think, you know, that just goes to show how important all of these players are. Um, Lee for Mainz, Haller, even though he didn't score in that one, I mean, the fact that he was there to put pressure on and, and get that header just shows how important he is for Dortmund. How do I think this one is going to go? Um, so, so far, Mainz have conceded three goals at least in each of their matches since beating Bayern Munich 3-1. Um, so, I think... I think Dortmund are going to have a decent time here. Um, I don't see Dortmund losing this one. I think Dortmund are going to win here. Um, how many goals? I, I think I think Dortmund win it by two goals. So I'm going to go with a... I think a 3-1 is a safe bet. Um, the thing that I like about Mainz is Mainz don't just roll over. Um, they do kind of fight back. Um, even when they're four goals down or it's 4-1, they're still trying to fight and, and get something out of it. So... I think Mainz will score. I think Dortmund will score. I just think Dortmund will score more. <laughs> um, so I think, yeah, I think I think three-one to Dortmund is is a decent uh, a decent scoreline. Um, so yeah, and, and I think Dortmund end up winning the Bundesliga. I think I think that's what everybody wants. Simply because Dortmund are kind of like the darlings of football. Um, as I said earlier, you know, they're, they're the kind of they're a development squad. Uh, the kind of team that or development club the type of club that just buys players that are not as well known um, and then they just turn them into superstars uh, and I think you know when you look at a team like Bayern Munich who's often known for pillaging Dortmund um, and, and stealing some of their best players the likes of Mario Gotze and Robert Lewandowski Mats Hummels um, and then you just think like Marco Rios has stayed there and it has been I think 11 years since Dortmund last won the league and, and those players were there Lewandowski was there, uh, Gotze was there, um, they were all playing with Rius, and, and Rius was the only one who stayed. Um, so I, I, I think I think Dortmund deserved this Bundesliga title, they've really pushed for it, they fought hard for it, um, and I think it really will be a pity if, if Dortmund don't get it, and if Bayern somehow managed to steal it at the death. Thank you again for watching guys, don't forget to like, comment, subscribe. Um, I think we're having fun here so far with these prediction and, and preview videos um, and we really appreciate all the views and, and the comments and one or two people you know retweeting on Twitter as well so thank you thank you so much for all of the support and thank you so much for the interaction um, and we hope to see you here again and, and stay safe out there thank you